So hello, everybody. I'm Diana Gray. I'm the America Community Marketing Manager. Um, and tonight I have Nicholas Ehrlichman, who's a two-time MVP from, from Go Grow, and Tracy Dixon, um, who's a three-time MVP, and she's from Centric Consulting. So um, we're going to get started tonight. Um, with our experts who will tell you how they started their RPA journey, in which industries they worked in, and most importantly, what their favorite automation use cases are so far. So uh, Eric, do you want, or Nicholas, do you wanna start? Yeah, sure. So, well, happy to, to see you all here. It's a pleasure. Um, how it started in RPA actually is a little bit funny because I was doing other things in a consulting firm. Um, there was a point that I finished a big project and I was like, hey, we want you to tell us what you want to do. We have like four options of things to do. One of those was RPA with UiPath. And when you, we only had one person doing that on my company at the time. It was around the end of 2017, mostly. Um, I didn't like it very much. I just see a few things and it was like, hey, I want any of the other three. So I actually didn't want to do UiPath and RPA. Uh, it's a little bit funny because we got a couple of projects more and it was like, hey, I know you didn't want it, but <laughs> we have you, um, we need you. So I started doing that and my partner left the company. So I was alone with a couple of projects. Um, what it captivated me the more was the most was I started talking with a lot of clients, companies, and seeing all their troubles, their problems, and how this was kind of a solution to a lot of headaches that they were having. And I started like slowly falling in love with it. And now it's been like four years, a little bit more, and I can't get enough of it. And it's always a pleasure to talk in this kind of conference and see people who want to try starting or already started with working with UiPath on RPA because it's an amazing journey. So on my side, uh, I started at the, um, the third quarter or so of 2018. Uh, and I was looking around for um, something to, to keep myself busy while I was in between projects and love to learn uh, and our firm had recently opened up a, the RPA team. And I thought like, what is this RPA? It sounds crazy. Um, let me ask about that. See how much the training is gonna cost. Um, yeah, maybe I have some interest in looking at that. And so I, I talked to the, the person that just started our practice. It was really just one or two people at that point. Asked him about that. And he said, you know, hey, there's all kinds of training out there, totally free. And, uh, you know, the, there's even the ability to get certified and that was enough for me. So I was off to, to go check it out and look at all of the, the stuff out on the, the Learning Academy. And so I pretty much took all of the courses within a month or so, I, one after the other. Um, I have always done some type of, you know, something to make my work more efficient. So uh, VBA and Excel macros and that type of thing. And for years, I had looked at all of the different macro recorders out there and I'd try them and then it fail. It would make me mad and move on to the next thing. Nothing works very well. Uh, and so as I started to, to do the first class where we were actually downloading the, a tool that worked, um, had full functionality and started to do things, I thought like, this is what I've been looking for all along and didn't realize it. Uh, it happens to, to have the choice for Visual Basic also, it was only, that at the time, which is what I was familiar with. And so I, you know, after I got through a couple lessons, I was already starting to do stuff for myself to make things a little bit more efficient, importing my phone records. So I didn't have to do as much stuff related to my timesheet, that type of thing. Um, but that was really it. I just took everything possible, learned as much as I could in the academy and then started automating for myself pretty quickly. I think I had something for my kids' grades within a month of that which is, you know, 15 minutes a day of my life that I got back. So I'm super happy about that. Great, thanks, Tracy. So can you guys talk a little bit about what your favorite personal automation is? 
Well, um, I think that my personal favorite is uploading my time reports to SAP because when I started working, it was like, I needed to track all my hours and say which projects and which type of tasks I was working in. And the first thing I did was, hey, I built a macro and I can move from month to month, carry all my extra hours that I were working on and those kind of things. But I still had the problem that I needed to manually go into SAP and load everything. And there was a moment when our company changed it and we needed to start doing twice a week. I was like, I had like a couple of hours twice a week of uploading that. And that was, I think, the first actual meaningful robot that I built for myself uh, as the one that left me more proud of myself because it took that task away that I hated doing. So similarly, if I had to pick like one out of everything, it was when I finally automated my timesheet and I could look at the screen and see something else besides me typing in those hours every, you know, twice a month. It fantastic. Like, I feel like my life's a little shorter every time I have to manually fill a timesheet. It terrible. It takes a really long time down to the quarter hour and what you did during the time took so long. So what I built reads from Outlook, um, which doesn't even have to be installed on the machine. It reads from Outlook in the sky, just um, from the cloud reads things. And as long as I've categorized my meetings properly, um, which a lot are already categorized recurring things, it takes the information from the subject lines. It adds up all of that time per day and goes and types it in for me. Wonderful. Was so happy when I, it took me a little while to get that going. I tried a few different ways and figured out what would work the best. So that is my most gratifying. And I still use it today. I've had it built for a little while. Um, my, I was, very happy to have built the first one with my my kids in the grade, not having to log in for four kids every day and seven classes and click on every class to see if they turn things in. So that's what I demonstrated a lot because it, you know, when you see grades that are sent to you in email, you don't have to go look at all of that information every day in a really bad government app that just doesn't work that great. It was awesome for me. So um, tonight, these everybody here is is taking the reboot your skills program. What would what did you guys do to get started um, learning? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So the first thing that I did, I don't recommend anyone of you trying to do it. It's just learning by myself. Like I didn't even know we had an academy. It was a long time ago. And I try to build everything from scratch, trying to go through documentation and kind of learn by doing. And it was a really stressful process. Um, after I think three or four months, someone from, we had a meeting with someone from UiPath and they say, hey, but haven't you tried Academy? And I was like, hey, what's Academy? And I started doing all the courses and you had like all the paths. And back in the day, the courses were not as complete as today. like. Now you have a course for each feature that you have in your iPad, but it was amazing. And after a month, I think, or so that it took me to get through the um, academy, did the certification and start building better things. I was looking back into the things that I did at the first time and it was like horrible. It was like, and you see what you do your first time and you see like with six months later eyes and it's like how in my mind I thought I was gonna be able to tackle this alone. And after that, it was just going through the new courses in Academy, getting into the forum. The forum was the vessel that I use besides Academy because it, it allowed me to contact people that had a lot of experience, other MBBs at the time, and even get answers to questions that someone else already did. And that, that was, I think, the most useful tools that I have till today. Um, back in the day, we didn't have with your skills program. We didn't have the summer school that we did, I think, last year. And I think these kind of events and programs are really helpful because... Uh, oh, okay. Um, the problem with that is you don't get live chances to talk to people. It's like you just see videos and you just see text typed in somewhere, but getting the chance to actually talk to someone and present your screen, show your screen, show your problems and get feedback on that. 
that it's an amazing experience. So, so similarly, um, did you want to say something, Diana? No, I was just going to thank him for the okay. response. Yeah. So uh, similarly, I you know went out to the academy and did you know I think a couple courses, learned enough that I felt like I could attempt things on my own, and then I would hit the wall and not know what to do next. And so I um, I was aware of the forum and then the the Slack channel. I, love to be able to use the form especially to look up you know somebody asking the question prior so between that and then putting questions out in slack because i'm, I'm kind of an instant gratification type of person um, people were super helpful in responding to stuff right away um, so i didn't feel like i was stuck for very long uh, and usually it was something very minor almost universally that little small thing could be fixed and then i, I could be done with an exercise or, or done with whatever i was doing so uh, I definitely use Slack quite a lot um, and then kind of chose to to put myself out there and spend 15 minutes a day a few months thereafter because people have been so helpful for me. And I, I knew that often you're you're so close at some little small thing um, that once you get past, it's the difference between you finishing a, a project or not. So um, I still go out there and answer questions. It's nice to, to not be stuck for very long. So between the two of those, that's really that all I did just run through all the, the courses. And then after that, I, I think my first project um, was to, to build something that we could show to a, a client. Um, took a couple of weeks. I was super proud of myself for being able to do that. And that, after that was off and doing stuff like with a mix of fun stuff for myself completely um, along with, you know, client oriented or, or billable type things, uh, which I think is super important. You start looking differently. It probably takes, three or four weeks, you start to see everything with, you know, oh, I could automate that. I could be so much more productive if I didn't have to do X. And I had a, a mental backlog going of all of the things that I wanted to automate at some point, because there's really so much that you don't think about um, that you could take all those minutes back and spend that time with friends, family, doing other important stuff at work and, and not, you know, kind of junk stuff that a robot can do. Thanks, Tracy. So um, the next question is, what is your favorite automation use case? Maybe you know of some with a, that would have a big impact. Can't hear you, Nicholas. I think I'm here. Yeah, yeah, I always made it. And the one that I enjoyed the most, I think, was in a banking process, the onboarding of applications for credit cards. It was a process that they were doing with call centers around 100 or 200, 100 a day probably. And when we automated that, we were able to get like 300 applications per day. And that was awesome from both perspective because people actually requiring credit cards get their application processed faster. And the bank, of course, got more applications processed. But the good thing was not that, is that that single process actually spawned like five, six, seven process around that because then we started doing onboarding of applications coming from people actually going into the bank, coming from the uh, web application on the bank. Actually, they were working on adding the um, channel of requesting through mobile application. And then we also did requesting of loans, debit cards. And it was amazing because after that, after it was like a snowball. And when you see it in the end, you had process getting the application, evaluating them, accepting or denying it. But also then you have processes that were actually accepting and activating the credit cards. And it was incredible how we started with that bank with a single process. It was a POC and ended up having so much impact in the whole sector and the clients even. That's great. Tracy, how about you? So there are a couple for me. Um, the, the very first client project that I worked on where it was me, I was the, the developer, um, it was for hospice patients. And um, the process currently, um, you know, when I arrived was that this team of individuals had to sit and refresh a page constantly. Um, they were looking for referrals from different healthcare providers where they've said, hey, this patient qualifies for hospice care. 
are you able to take them? They'd send out that type of thing. And so um, I automated a process where it would respond to that 24 hours a day. Um, and so the, you know, the people that were sitting there having to, to spend their whole day looking for these types of things wouldn't have to any longer. Plus it was an average, you know, as best as they could, you know, three different call centers across the country. Um, it was about eight to 10 minutes on average for the, the average response back to, to tell that provider, yes, we can, you know, take care of the, the hospice needs for this patient. So, you know, the average um, is two, two weeks or so that a, a patient will still be around after that time. So obviously the, the length of time that it takes to do things is, is meaningful. So I was able to automate that and get it to three to five seconds where somebody was likely still sitting in their chair when they were responded back to, to say, yes, we can take care of this patient. And then there was a secondary process behind that where it took you know, the medical records for the patient and so on. We're also able to send a, a text and a, a Skype mes message over to um, workers for the, the company, for the client, um, where sometimes they were sitting there in the hospital down the hallway from the family and got the notification that, you know, there's a, a patient here, family would like to talk through potential options. And so they could walk down the hallway and say, you know, how can I help when that family, you know, really wanted to, to get every minute possible with their loved ones. So it felt really good that, you know, those referrals never got lost underneath the desk. You know, they were done all the time, super fast. The experience for that family was better. Um, and to be able to, to do that just by automating a process and, and the employees didn't have to sit and spend their day refreshing constantly. They could then work on things that, that really were more meaningful, um, talking to, to patients, families and setting up um, things that needed to be done further down the process as opposed to what they were doing. So that was very meaningful. Um, the other one, um, the, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, um, the local Jacksonville chapter that I'm a board member of, we're working on an automation with them to ensure that volunteers are there for their shifts to, um, to reply to um, a, a help desk where um, people who, who need to talk, it's not a crisis type thing, but need to talk um, relatively soon would email in and um, they weren't always getting responded to. Volunteers you know, didn't always remember their shift that they'd signed up for. So setting up a system of notifying them by a text um, and then following up if, if an email hasn't been responded to um, in a day or two regularly and then escalating that. Um, so if somebody does actually reach out for, you know, just to, to talk for their mental health, that, that they do get a response, which I think is super important if you take that step to reach out to somebody. So those are, are my favorites of all. Great. So I think we're gonna open up the chat now or, or the, you know, you guys can put, take yourself off mute just to see if you have any questions on RPA that you wanna ask Nicholas or Tracy. Um, or just any questions on UiPath in general? I think we, we have a couple of them in the chat right now. I don't know, Tracy, if you wanna go first or I'll just go with the first one. But the first one is how many hours a day or week should we spend to learning to be able to build simple automation projects with UiPath? Well, you have two options, depending on how skilled or how tech savvy you are, you can go with UiPath Studio X or UiPath Studio. The main difference is that with Studio, you would be able to kind of automate end-to-end -end processes. And with Studio X is more oriented to automate your own task or your team tasks, not processes that kind of involve different sectors or areas of your company. But if you actually go into the academy, you have learning by roles. You have like already assigned a curriculum depending on what you want to learn. And if you want to learn using Studio X, I think it's around 15 hours or so of courses. And for Studio it's around 35. So I would say like, depending on how many free time you have, but a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks if you are doing Studio or maybe one, a couple of weeks if you are doing Studio X, you should be able to start doing automations because you don't need to finish them from start to bottom. You should be able to start doing small, simple things as long as you go all the way with the learning. Great, thanks. I think you're on mute, Tracy. I don't know. 
I just send you there. It let me. Okay. I was stuck. <laughs> it said you can't unmute yourself. <laughs> Felt like jail. Um, so we're talking about what was our current question? How many hours or days a week you need to spend to learn and start building automation, simple automations? So I, I think it's probably you could spend a couple of hours per session, uh, but that's going to vary to me. Uh, you know, some people might have a, a super easy time with a, an exercise. Uh, some people might might need more. If you're, you know, really excited and want to to run and do more, I think you do more. Um, you know, up to to whatever time you have available. But I I think you know you can learn the basics in uh, what two to five hours a week, something like that. Yeah, and after this Robot Geoskills program, you are going to be able to build simple automations in just some days. So, so I think Michelle is asking which platform are you building in. Um, what I'm building for, like professionally for other for my clients, I've used only Studio because I've been tasked to do like more complex projects. And most of them, they involve different areas, different people. Um, it's more on, on an end-to-end -end project, but I've done a lot of things in Studio X and I really like it a lot. That's why I always try to participate in this kind of events that use it, because I think it's an incredible tool, especially for people who actually don't have any technological or in, I don't know, software experience. So um, the, the platform that we're using for the class is Studio X, which is more the, the business version of the tool. And then it's up to you guys whether or not you want to stick with that tool or whether you want to, to also look at Studio. When you install it, there are both options always built in. So when you've installed one, you've installed the other. Um, and you may find you know quickly you want to go to the, the more technical version. So totally up to you um, and what you're comfortable with it's totally fine to stay in Studio X forever. Um, if you wanted to do focus on more, you know, the non-technical side of things, and you really don't have to have coding experience, really just willingness to come back and continue learning it is it. There's no requirement. I think that that's a little bit related to Nadia's question. If you know any coding languages. So I do, but I was not, I was a developer like 20 years ago uh, for six months. So, I mean, hardly, I would never really say I was a, a developer because it was such a short time and then went into project management. Um, so, and I go to visual basic then, um, but that you don't really, you're not, you don't have a black screen with green letters, that type of thing. It's configuration um, for the most part. And rarely am I actually having to write code. And, and when I do, it, by choice, I, I usually have multiple ways to do the same thing. So um, I wouldn't worry about limiting yourself by what coding experience you have or you don't have. You can acquire some um, through through using the tool if you wanna get into that area of things, but it's not a requirement. Yeah, and if you use Studio, you are eventually gonna get some experience or some knowledge on Visual Basic, that it's the language that it uses on the, like, on the background. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't know, you end up doing macros, for example, in Excel. So you do a little bit of Visual Basic or even some things of the configuration use a syntax of Visual Basic. So you don't actually need to learn to code or learn the language itself, but you're going to be picking small pieces of the syntax just by doing your iPad. So like just by learning how to use the tool, at the end of the day, you're going to be learning some of those things. So you don't need to have it at the start. If you already know a little bit, it may be a little bit easier to learn it and to use it, but it's not going to be a problem at all. And there's an option also um, to, to have C Sharp be the, the language involved, but just a, a setting that, that you can choose. So, uh, but I, I would never worry about any of that limiting you. You'll, you'll go out and figure out what's needed there are a ton of resources to, to help you. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the links yet, but there's a, a Slack forum. Uh, well, the actual forum and then the Slack channel also where you can reach out and get help if you get stuck on things. And um, it, it was a while before there was any coding involved. And I do know how to, to code, although it had been a while since I had to do it for you know my, my job. 
So I, I do see a question about taking the, the advanced RPA developer exam. Um, I have taken it a couple times um, because the certification expires. I actually took it, gosh, a couple months ago, most recently. So I am the certified developer. Yeah, my, myself always. I did the old certification, not the new one. It's been a, a while since I've done it because I was not actually developing robots for a while. I'm actually kind of going back into it right now. I was more on management and leading the development team. And I have like pending in my to-do list for a couple of weeks now. It's like kind of they're bothering me and saying, hey, are you going to take me now or not? But I do strongly recommend it for everyone who has uh, the time to do it because it, it will only allow you to check your knowledge and make sure that you actually apply the knowledge that you just learned through the courses. But it will also allow you to present to better present yourself to, I don't know, even internal in your company if you want to start developing or, I don't know, if you want to apply for a job in RPA or something, that certification is going to go a long way. Totally agree. So uh, we have, I, I think it's a great way to show that you, you know, have certified knowledge and it helps. Um, so you'll, once you put RPA anywhere on LinkedIn, you start to get contacted constantly. <laughs> I swear I have something in my inbox uh, every day about you know, some type of job or something. It is a hot market. So getting certified, having that to put on your resume, even if you don't have a lot of experience, can go a long way to, to showing that you do know your way around um, automation world. So I think we have time for a few more questions. And just so you guys know, Nicholas and Tracy will be on later in this program on another evening. So if you have any questions while you're going through your courses and everything, please jot them down for us. Um, I think we have three more sessions that we're going to be running. So um, another question that came in was, can you build in Studio X and import it into Studio? Yes, you can. Um, however, you can't go from Studio X to, to Studio and then back again. So um, you can move the automation to Studio, um, but it I wouldn't think of it as something you'd constantly want to change back and forth on. Um, so you can do that, the direction from Studio X to, to Studio. But make sure you back up stuff if you want the old version in Studio X, because once you convert it, you can't return back. Thanks. And then is Studio good for copying a value from Command PowerShell, pasting and posting it into a website, and then copying some values into Excel or other de destinations? Yeah, that is actually a great question because UiPath not, not only, well, RPA and, and ScanBot, UiPath not only works with um, today's tools like websites and um, desktop applications, you also have um, activities that will let you interact and automate interactions with your terminals. May that be CMB, PowerShell, or any other terminal that you have. So you would be able to do that. And that is a great tool because one of the, most things that is being done with automation. It's not only automating tasks that are kind of repetitive and those kind of things, but also trying to bridge the gap between legacy systems and up-to-date systems. Because most of the times you cannot build an integration between Excel and a legacy system or even a CMD or PowerShell application. So you can use UiPath to bridge that gap between the two tools or between the two things that you want to do. Yep, totally agree. The UiPath can really, you know, type into anything that you can type with it, that machine has access to. Um, so anything that you can get to on, on your laptop or computer, it can get to in the same way. It can type into it the same way. So um, it, you don't have to, that beauty of it is that you don't have to change anything. You don't have to convert software or anything like that, that you install the tool um, and, and everything else can remain the same. And there are usually different options for how to do things, but you, you don't have to be limited. It pretty much works with everything. There's a, there's very little that it, it could not do just the way that you do things. And I think the, the other question is, is there a low cost to learn? Um, just want to say, I don't know if the question is directed to this, but the academy is completely free. The only thing that I think has a charge are the certifications, but all the courses, the learning courses, the um, website, the forum, everything is for free. So you're able to learn 
and dedicate as much time as you want to learning UiPath without any cost. And, and the courses are well done too. They're a nice mixture yeah. of lab and compared to other places that I've looked where I, I just couldn't get through a course or two. It, they were just so poorly done, um, outdated. These are really well done. They keep them regularly fresh. Um, they're current. Some of it you can listen to audio. Um, you don't have to just sit there constantly. So it, it is a nice mix um, where they, they really did put great effort into to what's out there. I think so, one other question is, um, what um, do they do after this 10 days training? Um, if you think that Studio X is the right tool for you, I would really suggest going through the RPA Citizen Developer Foundation. I, and if you go into the academy, I'll leave the name here in the chat. Right? So you have learning by roles, and one of the roles is RPA Citizen Developer. And that's the learning path that I that I choose if you want to continue learning UiPath Studio X. And I can leave the name of the other one if you want to learn Studio instead. So Tracy, do you want to put your email in the chat? Yeah. Um, and then there are a couple of questions um, about what do I do if I get stuck in a solution or are there companies where you can apply for jobs? So Nicholas, do you want to talk a little bit about the forum? Yeah, so basically, whenever I'm stuck with, with a problem or something that is kind of bugging my mind, an issue that I can't solve, I go into the forum. I think it's the best tool to get a, an answer for your problem because you have two ways to go there. First, what I do is search for my problem. And most of the time, it's just copying, copy pasting the error that I'm getting UiPath or actually searching for what I want to do. For example, let's say I want to, I don't know, merge two Excels. I should search in the forum merge Excel files. And I'm pretty sure that at least 80 to 90% of the times, even if you are starting, you're going to find an answer from someone that already had the same problem, already want to do the same that you want to do, and you'll get the answer. And the other rest of the times, I should post a new question myself. And I don't know how much time it is right now. But I do believe that around 2019, the response time was around seven to 10 minutes. I think it's a little bit longer now because there are a lot more questions, but usually you get a response pretty fast. And there are not just anyone posting responses, like anyone can reply, but you're gonna get good mm, quality responses. Like most of the people that are pretty active are other MVPs, chapter leaders, or even forum leaders. Um, from the question that if you want to find some companies searching for RPA developers, I think the best idea is to go through LinkedIn. But if you go into the forum, you'll also have one of the categories that is called shop board. And then you'll see a lot of postings requiring or searching for RPA developers. Yeah, and I believe there's a channel in the, the Slack forum as well that's focused on jobs. but. So you could put like studying RPA on LinkedIn and you'll start to get hits. I mean, people are really hungry for, for automation, um, whether that be, uh, and it's not just developers, whether that be a business analyst or project manager, but um, just anyone that's familiar. Thanks, Tracy. Um, and then this question, is there a certification for an RPA BA? Um, there actually is one coming out later this year. Um, it should be out around the July time frame is what they're targeting right now. So um, good timing for taking your training so you could be ready for it. Um, and then another question that we have is, um, I think that's it. I think someone mentioned that they thought they had to pay to access the tools. Um, not only, because maybe we, we didn't explain this, not only the, the academy and the forum are for free, but you also get to download UiPath Studio community version, which is also for free, that you can learn, that you can use to learn and test all your ideas and do even your own automations in your home, your personal automations if you want. And right. it's not super limited, like you download it and you could use it once or anything like that. Like it really is a totally functional version that you can use and, and long-term 
and, and set something up to, to run for yourself um, unattended or as an assistant side by side while you're doing other things. So it, it's a fully functional piece of software yeah. that there's really not a limit on. So it was a, I yeah. thought it was fantastic. You don't see that very often. Yeah, you can uh, you can use every tool from Studio. It's not like it's limited in the features that it has. So like you have every feature that you can build with a paid license in Studio. You can do build the same with the community license. The only restriction is you cannot use it for commercial uses. Great. Okay, so we're going to see you guys later this week, hopefully. Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's session. And um, please make sure you copy down Nicholas's and uh, Tracy's information um, from the chat window. I'll leave this on for a little bit. Um, and if anybody wants to unmute themselves, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording now. Um, but if you have any last minute questions, we're happy to answer them. I think we have 